Good evening. Tonight we're going to be surveying our nocturnal flying mammals. You got it, bats. Bats are really important for ecosystems worldwide, but they're especially important to monitor here in Connecticut because many of our local species are under threat due to a disease called white nose syndrome. So to study bats, we're gonna be using a non-invasive technique called acoustic monitoring, and I'm holding some of the equipment we'll be using. Acoustic monitoring is basically recording of animal sounds and using that to identify species and learn more about their behaviors. It's used for a wide variety of species, including birds, which are hearing some right now, frogs, whales, and dolphins, to name a few. Okay, how it works. Bats emit high frequency sounds that then bounce off objects and return to them in the form of echoes or vibrations in which the bats can interpret. And they need to have these high frequencies because they need to have tiny sound wavelengths that are no more than two times the size of the object that they want an echo off of. So if they are foraging for prey uh, that are tiny insects, they need to have really, really high frequency sounds. And for that reason, we need special recording devices to record these ultrasonic sounds. Using specialized ultrasonic recording devices, we can then digitize the calls of the bats and be able to visualize them and measure various characteristics to be able to identify species and other aspects of their behavior. And so what we're visualizing here is a spectrogram um, and on the y-axis, you see frequency. So it shows how these little swooping pulses of calls change in frequency from high pitch to low pitch and how they change over time. So here's a bat call. All right, let's begin acoustic monitoring. Since the 1970s, the technology has advanced so much so that there's a wide variety of units that you can purchase, research grade ones that can be stationary or used for driving transects. Today, we're gonna to be using Wildlife Acoustics Echometer Touch, and we attach it to an iPad that has an app associated with it that allows us as community scientists to study and monitor bats in our community. Um, and so all you need is the Echo Meter Touch, an iPad, all of which is on loan from the NRCA. All right, six steps for acoustic monitoring success. Step one, you need a really cool outfit equipped with a headlamp and cool bat shirt. All right, the headlamp and shirt are optional, but you should have a flashlight and you should always go with a buddy. You also wanna make sure you have your acoustic monitoring equipment and for better recordings, you can elevate your acoustic monitoring recording device like I've done so on this um, elevating pole to get better recordings. Step two. Next, you wanna make sure to survey at sunset. So make sure to check when sunset is as it's changed throughout the year and survey for at least an hour after sunset. You also wanna avoid bad weather such as rainy days. This is not good for the equipment. Um, as well as cold temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And you wanna avoid surveying three days before and after the full moon. All of these factors impact back activity. Step three, identify where you wanna survey ahead of time. With this equipment, it's great for doing walking transects. You wanna survey in areas like the Actus Flyway, such as roadsides, trails, forest edges, also surveying around bodies of water or rivers offer other great areas to survey bats. Step four, be quiet. Also avoid clutter like tree branches so that you have good, clear acoustic recordings. Step five, don't forget to hit the start and record button. The record button looks like a standard red dot. Step six, use the bat symbol to get a, an initial assessment of a potential species. This one could be a silver haired bat or a big brown bat. But warning, please be careful. These are probable estimates of which species it might be. And for a more rigorous vetting, you can send your wave files to us at the NRCA and we can run them through the Sonobat software.
with that acoustic monitoring. It's 8.30 p.m., so just around sunset. And we have two bats flying overhead. We have an auto ID of an eastern red bat, which is one of our migratory species. They roost in trees. Oh, there's two overhead. And they have a very characteristic J-shaped acoustic bat call. So when you're bat acoustic monitoring, you look at the frequency and also the shape of the spectrogram. I love eastern red bats because they're this beautiful, vibrant red color. And they're one of our um, few bats here that can have up to four offspring at once. We're now getting bat acoustic calls that are very characteristic of the hoary bat, which is our largest bat here in Connecticut. It's also a migratory species. It preys on large moths and even known to predate on other small bats. Again, another one of my favorites and it has a very distinct call, very low frequency call because it preys on larger prey items. Here's the calls that we got for the quarry bat. So they have these very characteristic shallow acoustic calls at a low frequency. Oh, I just had a bat fly overhead. And I made the classic mistake, did not start recording. So that's lost data right there. Every biologist hates when that happens. If you're just surveying for the night, you can go up to the upper left-hand corner and go to your recordings and see calls that have potential species IDs that are indicated by a species code as well as a date and timestamp. You can revisit these calls and listen to them and enjoy.